Hello everyone, welcome back to Creative Connect. I am Gopano Lakhwati and today I am joined by someone who I've been watching since I was a little child. And when she just walked into the studio right now, I could not stop smiling. As you can see, look at my face. Um, she's South Africa's favorite lawyer. She has played an actress playing a Neanderthal. She has played alongside Kate Licorice, where she has literally been in an affair with her husband so many times. Whoops. But Today, we are here with Shannon Ezra. Shannon, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for asking me. I'm thrilled. I just said to you off, off before we started that I'm a huge fan of your work. And you did say that. That is true. Yeah. And I just want to start with a testimony. Okay. Um, just to jog your memory a bit. In 2020, yes. um, Still Breathing was just put on Showmax. Yes. And there was a comment made where you were tagged in it saying, during this current climate of climate of South Africa right now, with so much uncertainty and the whole world, we a show like that was really something that people needed. Yeah. And just to focus. And that person thanked you for being part of that show and everyone else who was part of that show. Do you remember that comment? I do actually, because, you know, it was such a, I mean, we were all so sad and yeah, so yeah. scared mm -hmm. and and um, I think we were all just so desperate to connect with each other. So I remember feeling a, feeling like a very connecting um, kind yeah. comment. Yeah. Well, that was me. <gasps> it was. Stop it, I like it. it right, that's was. amazing. I was at home. It was during lockdown. We were sent back home for at university and I couldn't, I was just disconnected from the world. And then when I saw that show being put onto Showmax, then I started watching it. And then I just fell in love with everyone because most of the time when you get a show like that, that's so story driven, mm. people always say, oh, this person um, was the star for me. This person did it for me. But that really was an ensemble Oh, no, it cast. was just the most incredible ensemble. It was. In every way. And I just wanted to share that beautiful message with you because thank I've you. been a fan of yours. Oh, and now you. we're going to get started. Okay, amazing. Um, you're an actress. Everyone knows you. But I'd like to know, when did you first get the call of acting and why did you accept it? I'd say that was about four. Mm. I um I mean I, and I've I've actually talked on this a number of times but I was I was obsessed with a film called Tarzan Lord of Greystoke which mm -hmm. was directed by Hugh Hudson and uh, I became completely obsessed with chimpanzees mm -hmm. and um, I basically spoke monkey mm -hmm. all day long I drove my mother nuts and uh, I walked around in a little swimming costume that was leopard print and for birthday presents I only wanted skipping ropes mm -hmm. so that I could um make vines on a tree and swing on them and I just loved pretend I think a lot of children do but I loved performing in school mm -hmm. I loved I mean and it's just play you know but when I actually got a real serious opportunity I was 15 years old and there was a casting brief from Krista Schamberger Young who's one of our top casting directors and uh, our drama department at Crawford College was incredibly mm -hmm. strong and so Krista came through yeah. to see some of us and there was a particular look that they were looking for and uh, she picked a number of girls and she picked a number of boys and off we went to audition a few days later and um, I got a call back and they actually changed the brief I was very fortunate they really liked me and mm -hmm. so they changed I, I ended up getting a, a bigger part than oh. the part I auditioned for okay. and um I just broke my father's heart because I wanted to go into medicine. Oh. Fun fact, love biology. Okay. And um, I knew that being on set and being in an immersive imaginary world was just, there and was no it. place like it. And you've never wanted to stop and pursue something else? Or there is nothing to pursue. Oh. Being an actor is, um, it's like breathing. It compels you and propels you at the same time. I, I, I can't tell you. How many times I have cried and wept and screamed because if I could do something else, you know, you could have, you know, it almost feels like, you know, because there, there are times in between where, work where you're, you know, there's quiet time and you've got to really get used to mm -hmm. the quiet. Yeah. You've got to surrender to this process. And sometimes it feels like it could be easier if you 
had any interest in doing something else. Yeah. But but being being an artist is um, it is a real calling, and mm-hmm. you can't quiet it. You can't silence yeah. it. It's something that you must do. I feel the exact same way. Yeah. Um, but I want to know as you were uh, as you were a child, you watched so many films mm. uh, and so many television shows um which actors did you watch that sort of kept on inspiring you and they're like yeah i want this more and more now i mean there are many um and and not to be cliched but meryl streep certainly yes. uh glenn close certainly as a child i mean you know obviously the content was quite adult but mm-hmm. um when i look at meryl streep's performance in kramer versus kramer <gasps> When she's oh. on the stand and she's now being cross-examined by her soon-to-be ex-husband's lawyer yeah. and she just sits there and she, I think she says like three words, she doesn't even speak, and she is just the vulnerability and the honesty that she released. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know this, but but I think it was like six months before she had lost the love of her life oh. that she'd met on the deer hunter. Oh. and. I mean, it's 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 well documented that Meryl really struggled filming Kramer versus Kramer. Dustin Hoffman was incredibly challenging to work with, and mm-hmm. he really pushed her, um, not physically, but he like you <laughs> yeah. know, um, he 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 really poked and prodded away at her, and she was already so vulnerable and so fragile, and mm-hmm. it just all comes through that performance, and it just yeah, I think yeah, that's a definite standout. Um, from that film, I think one of my a scene that I can think of right now was when she was starting to tear up and she was like, and I should have painted clouds. I should have painted clouds so he could wake up and see I the know, clouds. I know, I can try now think about it. I'm just like, roll out. <laughs> I love, I love Meryl Streep. Um, she's absolutely one of my favorites as well. Another person I've been very obsessed with over the last few months is Kate Blanchett. She's, Only the last few months? No, it's just that um, I realized how I didn't know who she was when watching the right. film or whatever. So I'll use Thor as an example. I watched Thor Ragnarok. Thor! <laughs> Just as an example, Thor okay. Ragnarok. And I, she played Hela, yes. right? And only at the end of the credits did I realize, oh, that's Kate Blanchett. Okay. So the, her ability to transform. Have you ever watched Notes on a Scandal? No, I haven't. Oh, my word. Kate Blanchett and mm-hmm. Dame Judi Dench in that film, you have never oh. seen more nuanced, textured, Honest, true, authentic performance. Please do yourself a favor. I will. Tonight, <laughs> tonight, you're in for a treat. Um, and uh, so, watching Meryl and everyone else that you've watched, um, they inspired you. Then you went on to study this, and you did it. But when did you th- start to think of yourself as a good actor? Because you are. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, I think I've always been very aware of a talent. Mm but it was because people would tell me. Um, I, I just knew that I loved shape-shifting. I just knew that I, I loved to be this chameleon. And it's something that's incredibly invigorating to do and to get lost in someone else. Is, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's incredibly compelling. Mm. Uh, I think I've, I mean, as a small child, my mom would enter me in talent contests and it was always there. Oh, that's how you knew. Um, and... What have you recently read or watched that has given you a new perspective to acting? And can you describe this new perspective? Um, that's a, such a tough question because there's so much content that yeah. I that I actually watch. Hmm. Um, so to like now, like access files. <laughs> it's like... Um, It doesn't have to be recent. You know what film was incredible for me was Moonlight. Oh. That, that's, it's just something about that film. Mm-hmm. It, it shifted something in me. It really did. If, if, if I look at one of, like, a film that, like, greatly impacted me, I'd have to say Boys Don't Cry with Hilary Swank. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm so certain that it's about to become, I mean, it should become highly topical in the world of wh- where we are in a, in a trans movement in the world. Mm-hmm. But um, Hilary Swank's performance as, as Brandon Tina or Tina Brandon, um, it was just utterly astonishing how she transformed. Mm-hmm. And she just inhabited this 
and it's and it's based on a true story so it's completely heartbreaking and 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 the 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 way that the film was shot um the chemistry between uh Hillary and Chloe Sevigny it's a special film mm -hmm. very special I remember I remember sitting afterwards and actually having I, I wept in the theater like I had like 10 minutes where I just had to try and pull myself together and I, I, I'd gone to watch with my friend Jody and mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, the, the, the bomb, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. And like, we like, and we were both just yeah. finished. Uh -huh. And yeah, I think, you know, when you see something and it, and it, it literally, it, it just, you feel something shake up mm -hmm. inside you. It's like a boulder was unearthed. It was, yeah. That was, and was it the story that brought out that emotion in you or um, her performance? It was both. Both. I think they're synonymous. Yeah. I think they work together. Mm -hmm. um, everything starts with a good story. Yeah. And you can have the greatest actors but on a subpar yeah. and it's just like, eh, shame. If you don't have a good story. You got it. It starts with a good story and it's even better if it's a great story. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to play our game now. Oh my. Surprise, surprise. I'm so afraid. Um, so we're going to call it, we're going to play a game called. Song association. Oh, okay. Yeah. But with a twist, uh -huh. I had a look at your resume mm -hmm. and that under resume. skills and talents, uh -huh. I saw a whole bunch of accents on there. So we're mm. going to play song association with an accent. So I'm going to give you a word. This is hectic. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you a word okay. and also assign an accent with that word. And you'll have to think of a song where that word is in the lyrics or the title of the song, and you're going to have to sing it with that accent under ten, within 10 seconds. A access, brain, <laughs> your call is important to us. Please wait. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, your first word is, and the accent is, impossible with a standard British accent. And your time starts now. Impossible. <laughs> what? <laughs> Impossible, impossible. This is impossible. And that's time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome to my show. Fail. Okay. Number two. Oh, goodness. How many are there? A few. Okay. Yeah. I need to at least get one. Yeah. Easy word. Difficult accent. Run. Romanian. Romanian? Yeah. Run the baby, run the baby, run the baby, run the baby. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's one at least. That's one. Um, oh, I'm dying inside. Uh, we're going to do another one. Romanian. Yeah. Romanian. Oh, okay. Crazy Australian. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. <laughs> But I'm crazy. <laughs> Man, I want to sing these like properly. I don't yep. want to sing the accent. It's so weird. Um, another one. We have Californian accent. Imagine. Imagine all the people <laughs> living life today. You, you may say I'm, I'm a dreamer. dreamer. Yeah, you know, that was actually one of the first songs I had to sing, the first musical I ever did. Really? No, first musical I ever did in varsity, yes. The first musical I ever did was Young Frankenstein. Oh. But then I had to fun. leave the show. My mom asked me to leave it. She was like, yeah, it's taking time away from your schoolwork, so uh -huh. better, t better luck next time. But it's okay. And one day, I actually want to play the role of Igor, just to make it up to my 14-year-old self. May you make it manifest. Yes. Now back to the questions quickly. Ooh. Character preparation and performance yes. as an actor. Yes. Um, every performance, there's a director. And at some point in time, a director will give you a director's note. And which, what is the most, what has been the most memorable note from a director that you still think of every single time you have to take on a Ooh, new character? Oh, this is a great question. And it's, and it's a very clear, clear answer. So Ilse van Hermit, when I first worked on Issy Dingo in 2004, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I played a character, her name was Yvette Meyer. She was Kyle Ortlip's girlfriend and she was involved in this cult. And uh, uh, Ilse van Hermit at the time, she was the creative director. And I remember she came down 
to the floor and she said to me, I need you to not show me. She said, you, you are trying to show the audience. Mm. She said, don't do that. She said, don't show the audience. Don't tell them what's happening. Mm -hmm. She said, play the truth and play the authenticity. Mm -hmm. And that was like an absolute light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you think before then that's what you were always trying to do or was it just for that particular role that maybe that's how it came across? Uh, no, no. I, I think in that moment, in that instance, she caught me in, in a, she, and she prevented me from getting into a habit. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, it was a, it was a vital piece of information. And now here we are, you know, you think about that every single time. Absolutely. And, you know, and I, and I watch actors, you know, uh, you don't want to act the subtext. And I see a lot of actors acting the subtext and you know what it does? It, it undermines the intelligence of the audience. The audience mm -hmm. is there. The audience is with you. They're mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. They're there. And they're Where are you with us right now? Yeah. And um, if you if you are rooted in that character, and not the performance, because performance it almost sounds like an artifice, right? Yeah. Like this manufactured. It's not. You you are you are literally living and breathing this human being. Yeah. All you have to do is listen. Really listen. Yeah. And respond. Um, now, I want to know about your process. Okay. Using Candice from Still Breathing as an example. Mm -hmm. How did you navigate humanizing her when on paper, in theory, she's not supposed to be a likable person? You know, Candice, um, firstly, I fall in love with my characters. Mm. And the first thing that you have to do is you have to step outside of any judgment. Mm. It's not your place to judge them. Mm -hmm. It's your place to become them. Mm -hmm. And I had rooted Candace in a well of shame. We see her through her journey mm -hmm. while intermittent and, and, and very much threaded through the entire show. Yeah. Where we see her almost begging Trent for it A, to stop. B, that she can't handle this deceit and this betrayal mm -hmm. of her best friend anymore and that mm -hmm. it's killing her. Also, you know, having given up a child. And, you know, the, 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 the dynamic between Candace and Trent was always going to be a romantic one. I think, mm -hmm. I think, I think unfulfilled love mm. is often more romantic. Mm. Because there's always yearning. Yeah. There's also a lot of pain. But Candace deeply, deeply loved Trent and she could not mm. give him up. It's like, yeah. how did I learn to quit you? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and um, so there was a lot of shame. I don't I didn't want she was not proud ever of what she was doing, but she mm. could not help herself. She could yeah. not stop herself from loving this man. And and her whole life revolved around him. Mm. And, you know, when 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 Abby and, and Candace have that big fallout mm. by the when she's like, he loved us both. Mm. She was she was prepared to be the second. Yeah. And the bond that they shared was very different to the bond that Abby and Trent did, yeah, but she yeah. was at peace with it. Yeah. So, you know, and we all just want to be loved, right? Yes. Oh. And very often, you know, we only accept the love we think we deserve. And perhaps that's the love that she thinks she deserved. Mm. You know, yeah, and I'm um, just I just want to get your opinion between Candace's relationship with Trent and then Abby, the one, the one that they had. Which would you say was more real after watching the show? I think they were both very real. Mm. They were both very real, just in different ways, in totally different ways. And he needed both of them. Yes, he needed both of them. Yeah, um, it just sucks that Abby was not complicit in any of the information it really sucks yeah um and then after shooting that show you i mean before you did the preparation you stepped into the role you performed and then most of the time some actors don't know how to step away from a role mm -hmm. but how do you do that look i got very depressed filming on still breathing um candace took a, a lot out of me um, I think it's very, very important for actors to debrief. I think it's incredibly important to see a therapist. Yeah. Sometimes we get, you know, 
we've got these, we, we, I, I always say acting is not an act of self-expression. It is an act of self-discovery. You learn so much about yourself self. through other, and you've got this character. Listen, there's a, there's a beginning, middle and an end. It's a very finite process. And often you're, you might be dusting some stuff away and you might be kicking around some stones and sometimes you're unearthing boulders in yourself. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it, it can become very confused because the lines get very blurry. You become this person and they become you and they're these composites of this new mm -hmm. addition and you're learning about yourself. And, and, and most of the time it's, it's, it's absolutely for the better, but you can't... Sometimes we go to places where we might actually hurt ourselves, like emotionally. Um, I don't like to draw on real life things to make me like conjure up feeling. I, I, I'm, I'm always very rooted in a script and I, and I become very, very involved. But it's like you've got this imaginary life that is getting more and more real and your yeah. feelings and your response and your all the idiosync idiosyncratic responses that you're having are, are, are absolutely self-generating and very, very real. Yeah. Um, I think it's very important to have someone to talk to afterwards. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take you after doing that to sort of see a resemblance of who you were before playing Candice? I think every part comes along to change you. Oh. Um, but about, probably about six weeks. Okay. Probably about six weeks. Okay. All righty. Um, then we're going to move on to the film. Do your worst. And you played Sandra. Sandra. Sandra yeah. de Silva. <laughs> um, and it's a dramatic comedy. Mm. I watched it in one sitting. It was purely delightful. I really enjoyed Yay. it. Um, but the character could have, I, I mean, on paper, you'd think, oh, she exists within a drama because of, you know, where she is in her life, what she's thinking about, and also being involved. With her best friends, man. <laughs> Guys, I don't seek these out. Eh? They come <laughs> they just to me. Come to you. Um, but what was um, the process in playing a character that is so emotionally charged, complex, and layered? And is it often easier or harder to play a role like that? Playing Sandra was so much fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the script was fantastic. There wasn't really much to do. Mm hmm. Just be real. Yeah. I, I wanted to root her with a lot of heart. You know, she could have come across as, there was the potential of her being a bit shallow. Mm. But I knew that she actually had to operate from a place of genuine vulnerability and mm -hmm. fear. Fear of aging, fear of not working again. Um, yeah. You know, I, I loved playing Sandra and I loved, I mean, it also, it really boiled down to the fact that Samantha Nell is just an incredible director. And, yes, and yes. I mean, being mm -hmm. with Kate is always just such a pleasure and a yeah. delight. So, and, you know, we've got incredible departments. I mean, the way, the look and feel of her was so different. And what's, so I, when, I, when I'm working with a character, I, actually, I really do genuinely become them. Mm -hmm. And I became such a ditz. Mm. I, and I'm not a ditzy person. I'm not forgetful. I don't like... I would drive over beacons, like those orange, I, 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 it just became an app, like a, just a, like a, a banana. Yeah. And so you just go, you just go with it. It's just, you go with it. Is that method in a way? No, it's definitely not method. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's just part of my process. Yeah. I just, I liked, you know, I like to lose myself. In a character. In a just character. Just off into a character. Yeah. And then I come home and I'm just like, I'm just a, a, a lump of clay. Really. <laughs> just like. Eat, sleep, shh. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, Lioness. <sighs> Samantha. Oh, I'm obsessed with Sam. <sighs> you defined your process earlier on. Mm. And you obviously might have used the same process with a few changes here and there for Samantha. Look, every process is different because yeah. every character is different. Every story is different. So yeah. you, it's, it's not like I go in with like a, <laughs> this is what I need to do. There are certain things that I do. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I map out, I do an emotional map of, for continuity. Yeah. So I sit for about two weeks breaking down my scripts, summarizing them and then summarizing for myself, I have like what I call like my, my shorthand map 
which is a list so that I know where I've come from and where I'm going because you're shooting so out of mm, sequence. Mm, mm, mm. So that's something that's actually quite technical. And mm. I'm, I'm an organized creative, which helps me. But I've interjected. Please, please finish your question. <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry. Um, how much of your process changed after you shot season one where you had to come back for season two? Not much of it had changed, but I, I had a lot of adversity at home. I was struggling with a very challenging home life and that made it incredibly hard. Um, um, and there was pressure. I felt a tremendous amount of pressure mm-hmm. to do to do better work. And yeah. I, I mean, four days before we started shooting, I mean, I was just an absolute nightmare. I was literally fetal crying. Yeah. I was like, I've, I've, waste, I've, I've used up all my talent. I can't do it again. This is so much more demanding. I don't have it in me, but I, I think that's because I was just with a terrorist who was taking a lot from me. Um, and I guess I just had to, I had to put that inside her as well. Yeah. Cause you can't, you know, we're not radios that we can tune the channel and yeah. we, we, you know, we, there's not a, you know, you, we can't dull out the noise. So uh, you, you use what's happening. Yeah. You use what's happening. Um, so I can imagine you had to first fix Shannon before you had to go back to Samantha. No, there was no fixing Shannon. Shannon had to stop. Shannon yeah. had to stop. And you just had to be Sam. I had to be Sam. And we'll fix that problem. And okay. then afterwards, I nearly had a nervous breakdown. I'm so sorry. It's okay. But you're better now. I've been in intensive therapy for the last nine months and yeah. it's been the most wonderful thing. And, 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 I, and I say this, and I, and, I, and I don't say this lightly. I think, you know, as actors, what we do is very demanding and it's the most bizarre, beautiful job in the world. But if you don't have a supportive partner, mm-hmm. it's going to make everything so much harder. Yeah. It's very difficult for any partner to watch their partner make love on screen, to kiss, to be intimate, to share moments. It takes a very special, secure, kind, generous person person to do that. And and, um, I had a lot of interference. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, yeah, so we wrapped in the May. I got quite depressed. And um, then Do Your Worst came along Mm -hmm. and Sandra lifted lifted me up. And then I got depressed again Mm -hmm. and then I had to change my life and I did. And what these people give me, these characters give me is they make me brave. Mm -hmm. And they make you a stronger person. Yes, but it is very important. The mental health is very, 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 very important. Um, and, And to have to have unconditional, unwavering love and support. Mm. Otherwise, just be on your own. <clears throat> just be on your own. And I wanted to ask, do your character sort of teach you how to become your own support structure? Yes. Mm-hmm. After season one, I left a very destructive <clears throat> relationship because mm-hmm. Sam had made me so strong. She had galvanized something in me. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. And now... I mean, I mean, you know, we're living a happy life. Life, a happier is, life, life. is so beautiful. Yeah, and I'm we so get grateful. to grow. Yes, I mean, and if you're not growing, like, what's what the doing? point? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Um, back to the game, quickly. Oh, oh. Back to the vocal cord. It's very hard to sing in accents. Um, can I run? I was actually surprised when I read this one, but love, Israeli. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to sing an Israeli accent? Oh, no, it's, no, this is love. <laughs> Time. Um, see, I'm, I, 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 I can't, you know, what, I, I don't like this being, it's, it's very difficult because I get in my head and I am, um, I have to practice something. It's too, mm-hmm. it's, this is, this is not a fun game. <laughs> this is like horrifying. But improv is very, this very, is, very no, good. But I, it's like, I don't, there's no, there's no like, it's making me feel vulnerable. Well, should we take away the accents? <laughs> yes, just... take away okay. the accent. Like, let me talk in an accent, but to sing in an accent is really hard. Like, I want to practice. I don't like being bad at things. Okay. You're not giving me a process. He's fired. I'm firing him. <laughs> Gone. Um, okay, no accents. Angel. Angel. Mm. In the arms of the angel. Oh. Fly away. I should have started in the. I should have started it um, lower. Yeah. Time. 
No, 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 but you, you got the song. In the arms of please continue. the angel, fly away from here. I want to go that. into another verse. Mm-hmm. And the endless nights that you cry. What? We were pulled from the wreckage of your silent reverie. Mm. You're in the arms of the angels. See, I'm not getting all vulnerable. I thought I need to ask. You sing very, very well. So that was not good singing, but thank you. But the ability is there. Why did you did you ever think about going into singing? Or do you just want to be the actor who can sing like Meryl Streep? I do have some of my own music and okay. can I yeah, it's it's there, it's, but it's more of like a passion project. And mm-hmm. I don't want to like go into, okay. I don't know. You never know what's going to happen, folks. Okay. Uh, next word, bad. 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 It's a very easy one. I mean, you know I'm bad. You're bad. Yes. Jamon. <laughs> when the whole world runs gas right now, when you're going to me. Who's bad? bad. Uh, another one. Queen. Oh, like not the band queen. No. Um, no, just the word. That's the word. Queen. I'm fired. I can't even <laughs> think right now. My brain is literally jam. Think about Mamma Mia. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Dancing queen, <laughs> young and free, only 17. There you go. Okay. Last one. Thanks for the tip. Lie. Lie. Yeah, you're like you're a liar. Oh, uh, lie. <gasps> but there's so many songs with lie in the, in the, in the, lie, lie, lie. Pick one. But that's time. Access files tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Apparently I'm not very good on the spot. Okay. Working with other actors mm. and collaborating. Mm. How do you navigate a scene when your co-star gives you very little energy to work with? And does that often hinder your performance? Look, I'll be honest. I've been very fortunate. I can't say that I've encountered that many times in my career. And there have been one or two occasions. And mm-hmm. look, it's tough. It's, uh, it's tough. And, you know, you, uh, what we're doing is energetic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just got to keep on pushing. You got to, you just got to root yourself in, in the truth of the moment Mm -hmm. and not worry about what the other one's doing. And it is hard, but it's doable. Have you never gone to your coast like, Hey, maybe, you know, we're giving them constructive criticism without offending them. Well, that's when you go to the director. It's not my job. Mm -hmm. That's not my job. Someone else. You go to the director Mm-hmm. Say, look, this is challenging. Can you have a chat? And mm-hmm. the director will. And does that ever? And has has it changed afterwards, or look, it just I, happened look, I, and I, you moved on? I, I, look, I've been fortunate that it that it, it hasn't happen. it hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. It hasn't happened much, and I've just managed to work my way around it. it. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, vulnerability. You spoke, You touched on it earlier. Mm. Um, can you describe when an actor? Has, finds it difficult to access a character's vulnerability when they themselves don't express their own vulnerability. I think the most important thing about being an actor is that you've got to be willing to eviscerate yourself. You've, you, you've got to know where your vulnerabilities are. You, you, here's the thing. It's vulnerability that makes everything beautiful. Mm. The minute that you tap into that, you're going to get a far more authentic experience of, of being other. So I think it's very important to know yourself. Um, and vulnerability is very connecting, Mm. you know, Mm -hmm. acting, you have to remove ego. You have to remove Mm -hmm. the ego. It's not about, it's not self-serving. In fact, it it is, it is completely outside of yourself. You are serving a story. We are, we are, we are cogs in a very big machine. Um, I think vulnerability is the essence of it. I, I also think, you know, I think there there is the ability to 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 express vulnerability through character without necessarily being vulnerable yourself at all, mm-hmm. um, because it's not it's it's not you. Mm. You know, I find a lot of people not a lot of people, but 
but there's a there's a propensity for people to put up walls and it's protective it's self-preservation um but when you when you can tap into someone else for some reason there can be there can be a genuine release yeah it's kind of like you know you know how like you'll find yourself telling an absolute stranger something that you wouldn't tell the closest people in your life uh -huh. it's because the stranger's judgment doesn't matter mm. The people closest to us, they yeah. matter. What yeah, they yeah, say yeah. matters. And so there's fear. But when you're operating from fear, it's just going to get in your way. Yeah. Um, I want to ask, when you say as the opinions of strangers don't matter, but don't those strangers form part of the audience and your job as an actor is to affect an audience? No, my job as an actor is to, to, is to be the character. Mm. If... If someone is affected by it, incredible. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful side effect. I want the audience to come with, but my job, my job is my job. Just to play the character. To be who I am in as, that moment. As honestly as possible. As uh, truth, authenticity, vulnerability, all that stuff. Just all those beautiful, delicate things. That's that's my job. Yeah. I'm not responsible for, for how people. other people are going to feel about it, how they're going to, you know, it's, that's too much pressure. Yeah. What? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, have you ever had an experience where you were in the, in the same emotional state as one of your characters where you couldn't tell where the character ended and where Shannon started, but how can that often affect the people who work around you both on and off screen? Yeah, sure. You do. You get a bit lost. Mm -hmm. I, to, to be honest, when I get into those spaces, I go, I go and I'm away. Um, I'll go and have quiet and, and luckily that when that has happened, it's, it's, it's friends and colleagues that I've worked for for a very long time mm -hmm. and they understand that the process can be very confusing. So I just take myself away. I have quiet, I conserve the energy, you know, our energy is not boundless. The work is, it's extraneous and it's stressful. And, um, I also remember, uh, when I was shooting on, I dreamed of Africa. I remember that the scene was that my boyfriend had died and I had to cry in the scene and, you know, I was 15. I hadn't learned, you know, I, I was still, I mean, I, you know, you're a child. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember in order to get myself there, I I had evoked the loss of my grandmother. Mm. And it was just awful because I, I just, I couldn't pull myself back together. Mm. And I I, I I was like, I'm, I'm not ever going to do that again. I've got to learn other ways. Yeah, I was going to ask, yeah. was that the moment where you said, okay, I'll never tap into my own? I don't want to. I don't. Anymore. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, look, sometimes, look, sometimes, you know, you've done it a number of times. It's now not feeling authentic. And then you do, you have to go and upset yourself. <laughs> you do. And mm. if I just think about either of my parents dying, um, there we go. Bob's your uncle. Little Put on a little Pavarotti, Ness and Dorma. Think about my mom and my dad dying and it's tickets. Yeah. I don't like doing it though. Yeah. But if you must. Do. <laughs> if you must. <laughs> um, oh, what we do for our art. Yeah. Let's wrap this up very quickly. Oh. We have people. People. People who need people are the luckiest people in the world. Um, move. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move, move it. it. That was one of my favorite films as a child, and that song particularly. Uh, um, another one, trust. Trust. Yeah, a friend of mine recommended this one. I trust. Like, I can't. I can't even think of a song. Got nice, nice talk. <laughs> Um, second last word, believe. <laughs> Do you believe in life after love? I can feel something inside me say. <laughs> last word, play. Play. <laughs> Gone. Time. Fail. Time. Um, the last section, your career, the industry, growth. There's a question I just thought of right now, which I didn't have on here, but whenever you're asked to give advice to young performers coming into the industry, mm. 
you always say, be professional. Yes. And I want to ask, do you say that because you've noticed that new performers, entitled performers, are like unprofessional on sets where they think, yeah, I'm here because I have so many followers and I'm here to do the job. And oh, my God. Yeah. There's a lack of set etiquette. There are very important people there other than actors. Yeah. There are people who are there to to construct story with you. You know, when people are late, it offsets the day. Um, not being kind to people, not respecting the makeup artist's mm-hmm. wardrobe, um, not learning their lines. Mm-hmm. Just thinking they could grab the sides just and just read through quickly and then get yeah, started. Yeah, I must say that it's very disheartening because, you know, I love what I do so much. So it almost like it used to feel quite like it's like you're disrespecting my church. Mm-hmm. But now I'm just like, okay, it's not really actually my problem. Mm. It's not, that's not my work. Mm-hmm. But um, you never intervene. It's not my job to, unless I'm a producer or mm. I'm the director, it's not really my job to. Mm. I'm focusing on what I've got to do. Yeah. Look, it's, I don't, like, I don't even want to say, like, should it happen? Like, I don't want to manifest that. Like, mm. I, I've been so fortunate to work with so many incredible performers and long may that last. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then how do you navigate dealing with negative people when you're supposed to be in the scene with them? I don't spend time with them. At all? No, just... I'll, 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 like my body naturally starts to get repelled. Yeah. I'll start physically, I'll start moving away and I'm like, oh, where am I going? Oh, wait, oh, oh, we don't want to be here. Yeah. And, and I'll go and I'll go and be where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, guys, we're going to go for a take. And I'm like, okay, cool, show up. And then afterwards just separate yourself again. Yeah, I think I also think as actors, for me, I'm quite, I'm very, I'm very skilled at compartmentalizing. I'm very skilled at sublimating. Yeah. So... Just do what you have to. And then I try to play the accent game with you. Um, A bit of a confession. I think of myself as a decent performer. Okay. um, Only because I haven't had much practice doing it. And it is a skill. Yeah. You've got to sharpen all those tools. Yeah. The job. So now, a a few years ago, I, I resorted to trying to learn as many accents as possible then at that time, I think it sh- it sort of shaped my mind that the more accents I can do, the more people will think and the more I'll come across as a good actor. But do you think that the ability to do multiple accents has distorted the definition of a good actor? I'm not sure... Look, I, I think you've got to have some standard accents down. You should have your British RP. You should have your standard American. And also standard American is very difficult because there's so many dialects. I mean, it's like you listen to any South African accent. You look, listen to any Irish accent. There are different dialects. Mm-hmm. I think you need to have like <clears throat> your toolbox needs to have this this, this, this. this very basic standards in mm-hmm. it. But when you're learning an accent for something specific, you get to be more specific about it. Mm. Um but I don't think not being good at an act- accent makes you a bad actor. Mm. But if you are going to do an accent, you've got to get it right. Yeah. And that requires a great deal of practice and coaching and um, listening. And um, no, I don't, I don't, if you can't do an accent, I don't think that makes you a bad actor. Mm. Okay. I just think it, it is, it, they are, they are tools in your toolbox and you've got to keep lots of them sharp. And sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes you're just like, uh, what is this? Mm-hmm. And then you like shine it up and you do whatever and something really beautiful comes from that. Have you ever decided to use a different accent even though you you were not asked to do it? No. No. I have. Um, there was a play I did back in Varsity where so I was playing a woman. And um, my voice is naturally high most of the time. But in that moment, I I felt as though just to be more convincing, I wanted to 
speak a little bit higher mm. and so I can come across very, very clearly. Mm. And then that sort of, I don't know, it went to a British accent s- somehow. And then on the opening night, I had a few people who came up to me who were like, don't do that. And so the following day, I just spoke with my accent. And then they came and was like, yeah, that's a better performance because you were too much in your head trying to sound like a person who doesn't even exist in South Africa. And now, yeah. So that was just me sharing. That must have actually been, um, did that hurt you? It did. Yeah. It did. Um, And it happened again recently where I was auditioning for, because I've been been trying to get an agent. And then um, the brief that I was sent, they spent, it showed that the character was much older than what I am. So I thought, oh, let me try and speak with a lower register and just change my voice. And then um, submitted that. It was via, it was through a friend of mine. And then afterwards, they were like, yeah, unfortunately, we can't offer you representation. I was like, okay, cool. But then something, I was curious, I was like, what was it? Because so much rejection builds curiosity as to like, what am I not? What a beautiful right? way to look at that. Yeah, that's how I try to look at things most of the time. And then I asked my friend to ask the agent and then the agent responded saying, yeah, he got all the lines down. The accent was okay, but there was nothing memorable about his performance. And that, it really did hurt me. And because of that, now I've decided to like step away from actively pursuing it. Because like you said earlier, you'll cry and you'll cry and you'll cry. And then I don't want to feel like that all the time. That's why I'm trying to focus on this. Um, Trying to engage with people who I've watched, people who have entertained and inspired me. And if someday it leads to the role that I'd like to play or any type of role, then, hey, I'd rather let this be a door to that than me always trying to knock on a door and then just always getting slammed in my face. I don't know why I'm talking about all of this, but... Um, People like to tell me things. It's okay. Um, I just love what you said, that the rejection made you curious and there is so much rejection. There's so much rejection. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes it's just that you're just not the right look, just mm-hmm. not the right energy. Mm-hmm. But I... When people are like, I'm going to be an actor and I like how? And I'm like, well, do you have talent? Mm. It's the most important thing. You've got to have talent. Because you can work hard. Amazing. If you've got something to work from, mm-hmm. then you're just going to grow and grow and grow and grow. Yeah. But it can be very isolating and very alienating. And I'm so sorry that you've had this experience, but keep doing whatever you're doing. Something special is happening for you. Oh, thank you. Um, last question. Mm-hmm. If you knew that the next character you're going to play or the next story you're going to be part of was going to be your last, what would you want that story to be? And can you describe the character you want to play? No, I can't even answer that question. It's, it's, It's an impossible hypothetical. At all? I can't because these... So many delightful, beautiful, delicious characters that come along and just knock you off your feet. Like, can I select one? No. It's like asking me what my favorite color is. Can't do it. Mm. Um, do you have... Ask me what, like, one of my favorite smells is. Sure. But, yeah. like, no. And you can't even answer what, what has been your favorite character? No, because they are all my creation. I love them all. Okay, can I ask this one? A character that you've played that reintroduced you to your love of acting. That you, that I've you never lost my love of acting. Ever. And that's the... No, it is, the, it is my purest passion on this planet. And and I think that's why, you know, I, I have spoke about having the right partner because if mm. if someone is going to mess with your passion, mm. they're literally, they're, they're messing with everything with you. that mm. you are. Messing with your heart and your soul. Everything, every yeah. fiber of your being. Yeah. Shannon, I've enjoyed my day. Oh yeah. my God, this is so fun. I mean, the singing part and the accent was terrible. <laughs> like rather like, I wish you'd let me like... Just the accent, so it was very hard. Oh, but you know yeah. what? We'll get a do-over for the next interview. Okay. Yeah. Then you can choose the game for the next episode. 
You so. see, and, and, and here you are giving me credit, like I can be decisive and choose things. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, that's, I, I struggle with choice. Mm. But. Thank you so much. This is so lovely. Um, this is the mid-series finale of season two. Oh, wow. Amazing. That's so great. Yeah. And I was very, very much intentional about having you to get us to this point, because honestly, truly, um, I didn't know how to approach because it's still a thing to, um, that I'm trying to figure out how to get people that I'm actually interested in what they do and their performance to get them on the show but I think that moment with Lucetti in episode two was just like is what convinced me you and everyone just to hop on board and come onto the show you gotta do it yeah it compels you hey it compels uh, you and propels you at the same time go with thing. it mm. that show for Sandra Stein when is it happening? I mean, I can imagine it's it, it needs to involve so many other people. But do you want it to happen? I would love a Sandra Stein spinoff. Yeah. But, and I would, um, I'm in talks, mm -hmm. but I want to, I would like a, a limited series. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Like I don't want, like I'd be happy with just like eight episodes. Mm -mm -mm. And I would like, I, I would like it to be, um, gritty mm. very real yeah um yeah thank you thank you <laughs> everyone thank you so much for watching this episode i enjoyed it if you enjoyed it please do give us a like comment uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't and please do come back when we come back but there might be a little surprise in between but you're just going to have to stay tuned and remember to keep on using the hashtag you are connected. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I've just completed my interview with Copano. If you've enjoyed watching it, please like, comment and subscribe.